welcome to Cal State Fullerton's The Report with the latest news, views, and info to go. I'm Christina Rasban. I'm Sarah Fenton. And I'm Jen Moynihan. Today we will start by discussing some hot topics including Fourth Amendment rights, the Pollock Library renovation plans, and one local university gaining national attention. Beyond our discussion, we have reports on current CSUF news and events including the Business Career Expo, changes to the university's Army training program, and a new student movement gaining traction. And finally, we conclude with some local and national news on a priceless Easter treat, an iconic film celebrating its 50th anniversary, updates on the German airline crash, and more. But first, we'll begin with our segment called Hot Topics, where we'll discuss the top trending topics of the week. The Supreme Court debated Monday how police should arrest the mentally ill. The debate comes after a San Francisco woman with a mental illness was shot inside her home by a police officer. The Fourth Amendment prohibits unreasonable searches and seizures by the police. According to the Ninth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals, officers could also be sued for violating the Americans with Disabilities Act. On the opposite side, government lawyers argue police officers should be protected from second-guessing when having to arrest violent and dangerous individuals. What do you think? Should there be different methods when arresting a mentally ill person? I think it's a different topic because, you know, it kind of goes on a case-by-case -case basis. How do you know when you're going to arrest someone that they're mentally ill? And also, too, you have to think about the safety of the police officers. Like, they put their lives on duty every day when they're out there, mm -hmm. helping to protect the cities and keep them safe. So I think it's just... A difficult situation. Yeah, I don't think they have time to determine if someone is mentally ill or not. If they have a gun pointed at them, are they going to stop and ask them, hey, wait, are you mentally ill? I mean, that's just like that. You no, have to if, make a decision. Yeah, if you mm -hmm. feel like your life is at risk, you know, I'm, I'm not going to sit and analyze, like, well, maybe that person might have a mental disability, so I'm going to treat it a little bit differently. If I have a gun or some sort of, like, threatening gesture, coming at me, yeah. I'm going to react in a defensive, protective way. Yeah. For police officers, their number one part priority is the safety of themselves mm -hmm. and others around them, like citizens, and then the person that is behind the gun, if they have a gun. So they're not going to wait and possibly risk someone shooting either themselves or people around them. They have to take action. Maybe in the court they can take that into account if it gets to that level, but at the police officer level, I don't think they can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they can take that into account in court, like you were saying, when they assess whether or not the person has a mental illness, yeah. when they look at their crime. They don't necessarily have to do that when they're arresting them, because I think when you arrest an individual, it should be on equal basis for everyone. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's unfortunate, though, because, you know, who, who's to say wh what drives a person to do what? So you have to look at it that aspect as well. But um, I think that they should look at it on a crime basis and determine in the courts. So. Renovation plans are in the works for Cal State Fullerton's Pollock Library. An open forum was held yesterday to discuss plans to reopen the south entrance of the library sometime between summer and fall of 2017, which has been closed due to damage sustained from the 5.1 magnitude La Havre earthquake last March. The first phase will renovate the first, fourth, and fifth floors of the south end of the library. In an interview with the Daily Titan interim university librarian Scott Hewitt spoke about the lack of collaboration between departments saying all the departments on campus are like their own little ivory towers and they don't know what's going on in the other departments. Hewitt said the goal of the renovation is to make the library a social, cultural, and technological hub for students. The estimated cost for the renovation is between $30 million and $40 million. How do you think the library renovation will impact students on campus? How do you think the library could be improved? Well, I think it's really awesome that we're going to be getting a renovation in the library. Um, it definitely needs the upkeep because last year we had the earthquake that damaged the south side. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, it's really great that we're going to be getting the renovation. It's good that the money is being spent on something on campus for us. 
Um, and I think that, you know, the fact that they want to make it a cultural hub, a technological hub is really great. But at the same time, too, um, I feel like if they really wanted to integrate the departments, you know, the media center is in the library. We are in the basement. Mm -hmm. So, um, and media is a really big part about the technology hub and bringing the campus together. So I feel like maybe they should take the comm department in consideration as well. I think you make a really good point because I think a lot of people don't realize that the school's media is right below yeah. where all the books and the computers are. Like, nobody knows that. So it'd be really cool to get people to see that side, especially media, because it's, it's huge. Everybody oh, yeah, follows yeah. the media. A lot of people's opinions about things are shaped because of the media. Mm -hmm. So I think that'd be great. Also, I think it's cool that they're focusing on the library because that is a hub for students to gather on campus. Mm -hmm. And with Starbucks there, I mean, I think that's created a lot more traffic for students. Oh, yeah. So I think if they, they want to step up their game and make it a little bit more trendy, a um, little bit more up to date instead of old school library yeah. feel, um, I think a lot more people would gather there and maybe study at the library more often. Yeah, like you said, I hope they make it a little more upbeat and trendy. Then more people will go. It'll be like the little hangout, like the yeah. pub that they mm -hmm. want to talk about. Exactly. I mean, I would go more often. I go to the Starbucks down there, and I kind of hang around downstairs. But I mean, if there, it is a little more lively. I know it's a library. You can't really do much, but anything to bring party in the library. <laughs> Anything to bring students in yeah. is always a plus, and mm -hmm. I am glad that they are spending the money on something that would really benefit students, like right. library mm -hmm. instead of maybe another guest speaker. I think yep. mm -hmm. I agree. they spend the money in the right area this time. Yeah. A local university gained national attention recently for a resolution banning a display of flags on campus. The Associated Students Legislative Council at UC Irvine passed a motion to remove all flags, including the American flag, from the lobby of the student government offices. The motion, written by student Matthew Gravara, states that the flag has been flown in instances of colonialism and imperialism. The executive cabinet that oversees the university student government vetoed the resolution and issued a statement saying this misguided decision was not endorsed or supported in any way by the campus leadership of the University of California or the broader student body. What do you think? Were the actions taken by the student government an infringement on constitutional rights? I'm sorry, but I'm a very patriotic person. It may be the country music I listen to, but... I mean, I have an American flag phone case. The license plate frame on my car is an American flag. I have an American flag um, windshield like cover. You have an and American made car. Yeah, and I have so many shirts <laughs> with the American flag on it. I just don't understand why, when you live in America, why would you not want the flag, at least one on campus? I don't get it. I don't get why it is offensive to people. Um, it represents our country. Our country has a long history of good and bad, but what country doesn't have good and bad? So I think it's great to, I think we need more flags on campus. I do. I can't say that my, my level of patriotism is, is as high as yours is, <laughs> but I will say that I totally um, agree with you about the American flag and that it should be flown on campuses all over the country. Um, I really don't see why all of a sudden people feel a need to uh, complain about something. You know, and, it, and that's not just the situation, but it's all over the country. It's like if things are calm for a little bit, someone has to find something new to complain about it. So it, this whole flag thing, I'm sorry, but if the flags have been flown for several years, you know, why all of a sudden is it an issue now? Um, so I, I, I think that I, I don't agree with Matthew at all, and I think that if you're going to school in America, you should represent our flag and our, our morals and what we believe in here. Yeah, I think it's completely ridiculous that they removed it from the lobby of the student government. The fact that this motion was even considered in mm -hmm. general for the student government is kind mm -hmm. of ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Like you were saying, we do have all of these schools in the United States. We should be able to display the American flag and um, I would like to say that I think UCI's handling of the situation, how, you know, 
right after it passed, they came out and they said that this view does not represent the hundreds of other, thousands of other students that go to this school. It doesn't represent the school's policy itself. Mm -hmm. So I think their action to veto it and to um, rectify the situation was really well done. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now let's switch over to the campus events of the week. The Cal State Fullerton Mihalo College of Business hosted its Business Career Expo this month, offering students the opportunity to network with professionals and potential employers. Titan TV reporter Brian Brady has the story. The California State University Fullerton Business Career Expo was a huge success. Students had the opportunity to network with nearly 200 employers from every type of business and service. Networking events provide students with an opportunity to find possible employers after graduation. It is important in a time where finding work can be a job of its own, and who you know can be more important than what you know. If you missed the Business Career Expo, don't stress. The Internship and Career Expo on April 7th provides students further chances to network with employers. Log on to the CSU Fullerton Career Center page for more details. So if you don't have the career you want, go get it, period. With the report, this is Brian Brady. The Army Reserve Officers Training Corp has changed the main focus of their program. For the past 30 years, the program has focused on tactical training, but that has now been shifted to leadership training. Cal State Fullerton began implementing the change this past fall semester. Cadets will now wear service uniforms to class consisting of slacks and white shirts versus their field uniforms. Beginning 2016, cadets will be required to participate in cadet in initial entry training as well and receive training in cultural understanding and language proficiency. Visual arts and animation alumni visited Cal State Fullerton earlier this month to talk about their experiences and even share a few tips. Guest speakers included Disney storyboard artist Joshua Pruitt, Nickelodeon show creators Farnaz Charmatz and Chris Wimberly, and Muertoon's book creators Eric Gonzalez and Eric Hager. The panelists discussed everything from class projects and internship experiences to first jobs and their creative works for popular television cartoons. This free event hosted by the Art Professional Practices course was open to all students interested in the animation industry. A Cal State Fullerton alumni is now part of the staff for the White House Executive Office of the President. Erica Jacquez, who graduated in 1997, is now a legislative analyst for the Office of Management and Budget. Jacquez earned a bachelor's degree in criminal justice and minored in Chicano studies. Then she went on to earn a master's degree in public administration with an emphasis in political management and a doctorate in policy, planning, and development, both from the University of Southern California. Jacqua's journey can be seen as a motivation for all students to never give up and continue on thriving. A new student organization on campus is gaining traction. Titan Innovation encourages students from different departments to work together to produce industry-level projects at a collegiate level. Just how do they plan on doing so? Let's take a look. I'm here in front of Mahalo Hall with, well, everyone. Brilliant engineering students have teamed up with organized and skilled business students to promote projects that move forward our campus, our community, and our world. This is the first of many projects by the Student Collaboration Movement to combine the skills of different departments to create projects that move Cal State University Fullerton forward. This is Titan Innovation. The committee is essentially made up of student leaders here on campus. Now, our goal for this uh, committee is to build a student leadership uh, circle in which students from every department on campus will come together to pull the resources from each department and work together. So the committee is looking for ambitious, passionate people that just want something more out of their education. And they would have that fire in them, that ambition and passion to help one another and to push forward. What inspired you to lead this committee? How did this come to be? Thank the Center for Entrepreneurship for that. They're the ones that nominated Christian and I, which is another student leader, to push forward innovation. So essentially what we did is we went through a six week long training in which uh, we gathered all the skills necessary to lead a movement and push for innovation here on our campus. So the idea of achieving something greater than ourselves is something that really inspires me. 
So how far do you plan on taking this movement? We plan to take this movement really far. Right now we're just focusing on the business department and the engineering department, but we hope to get student leaders from all over campus to come participate. Students can reach out to us. I mean, right now we're a committee made of 12 student leaders from both the engineering department and the business department, but we have a website up, tinyinnovation.org. They can check us out on Facebook. Just send us a request and we're more than happy to talk to you. If you don't have the time to join the Titan Innovation Movement but wish to support it, log on to TitanInnovation.org and support the crowdfunding campaign by joining the Thunderclap. But hurry, Titan Innovation only has until April 16th, so give your support to the movement and help make Cal State University Fullerton a better place. This is only the beginning. The Student Collaboration Movement hopes to unite the campus under an unwavering banner of pride and innovation. Back to you. And now we'll switch over to some updates in local news. A 15-inch chocolate Easter bunny has been named the world's most extravagant bunny. Why, you ask? Because this rabbit features 1.7 carat diamond eyes and gold leaf painted eggs, worth a grand total of $49,000. This Easter bunny is carved from a solid block of Tanzanian chocolate and is estimated to contain 548 calories. Renowned confectioner Martin Chippers collaborated with the company 77 Diamonds to create the bunny, which Chippers calls a culinary phenomenon. The hills are alive as the beloved movie and musical The Sound of Music celebrates its 50th anniversary this year. Julie Andrews, who starred as Maria von Trapp, was featured on a television special in which she traveled to Salzburg, Austria to visit many of the sites where the movie was filmed. When asked what she thought made the film so timeless, Andrews said, the glorious children, the songs, the music, the lovely story, the adventure. It seemed to have a quality of joy about it, about life and love, which any generation can see. As one of the most iconic movies of all time, The Sound of Music will soon be released on a new Blu-ray version. Turner Classic Movies also plans to show a special screening of the movie at the Classic Film Festival in Hollywood later this month. Listen up, Peeps lovers. The popular Peeps Easter candy partnered with Prairie Farms to introduce three new flavors this season. The signature flavors include marshmallow milk, chocolate marshmallow milk, and Easter egg nog. There have been mixed reactions to the milk, however, due to the high amounts of sugar and sodium. In comparison to a regular cup of milk, the Peeps flavored milk contains three times as much sugar and twice as much sodium. Peeps Milk will be available at grocery stores in the Midwest for a limited time only. And now we'll take a look at some of the latest news here in the U.S. and abroad. A German airliner traveling from Barcelona, Spain to the German city of Dusseldorf crashed in the French Alps Tuesday. At least 150 passengers were aboard the aircraft. French President Hollande said at the press conference that the conditions of the accident, which have not yet been clarified, lead us to think there are no survivors. The plane reportedly lost 30,000 feet of altitude within nine minutes before crashing. Air traffic control issued a distress phase alert when the plane mysteriously failed to send a distress call. German Chancellor Merkel addressed terrorism speculations in a press briefing saying there should be no speculation on the cause of the crash. All that will be investigated thoroughly. Well, that's all we have on this edition of The Report. Join us next time for more up-to-date news, views, and info to go. Thank you. I'm Christina Rasband. I'm Sarah Fenton. And I'm Jen Moynihan. Stay fresh, Fullerton. <laughs> <laughs>